Hey guys, it's Joe here from Crime Red Phoenix Rises, and today we're back with part two of our series on Uendo Studios, How to Radicalize a Normie. So, without further ado, let's jump right into it. This is still going to be a long one. In fact, many did not set out to be far-right thought leaders, and may not think of themselves as such. Though they are often selling products, of which the alt-right are among their biggest purchasers, and it's not like they're turning the money away. The only one of these products I could see the alt-right actually buying is the Rainforest because just everyone thinks Alex Jones and his products are great memes. I know for a fact the alt-right hates Steven Crowder and Sargon of Akkad. I'm really not sure of their opinion of Jordan Peterson, but it's never seemed to be too hot to me. And again, same with Paul Joseph Watson. At the end of the day, I don't think the alt-right is who's buying these products. So there's that. How they present is the same way anyone presents who wants to be successful on social media. Accessible. Approachable. Authentic. I'm not sure you could make that accusation against Crowder. The other three, sure, but Crowder has never really seemed all that authentic or accessible to me. The face-to-face -face relationship a budding extremist forms with their recruiter, or the leader of their hate group's local chapter, are here folded into one parasocial relationship with a complete stranger. Why this person appeals to Gabe is they're not selling politics as politics, but conservatism as a kind of lifestyle brand. They rely heavily on critiquing or ridiculing the left. Feminists are oversensitive. Wait, sorry, just to be 100% clear, are you accusing Thunderfoot of being far right? Because that might actually be the most ridiculous thing you've said so far. Look, it could be a mistake in editing. The shit happens, you know. Also, let's be realistic. The feminists are oversensitive to just about everything. Black people unintelligent. Yeah, your typical conservative runs around all the time talking about how unintelligent the darkies are. Oh wait, sorry, you just threw a random alt-writer in with a bunch of conservatives to say that we're all the same. Because you're an idiot. Queer folks doomed to loneliness and trans people insane. I'm not sure that anyone has ever talked about the gays being doomed to loneliness, but... The trannies are insane. Like, you know that, right? Like, they, they actually think that they're the wrong sex. Which, when you consider human biology, they can't be. Also, apparently my social security number is being suspended immediately, so... Guess I'm fucked. Now, I don't know if it's a coincidence that these are all things Gabe thinks about himself in his low moments. By contrast, they don't sell conservatism as having sounder policies or a more coherent moral framework. What are you talking about? That's exactly what the vast majority of conservatives do. Fuck, even pea-brained Charlie Kirk tries to do that. But that abandoning progressive principles and embracing conservative ones will make Gabe happier. No, abandoning progressive principles will make Gabe actually have a set of principles. Or at least it gives them the opportunity to do that, because you guys can't make up your minds on something for more than about five minutes. So you can't pretend like you have any principles other than there are no principles. Hey, wait, maybe that's why moral relativism doesn't actually work. And you get infighting, like, you know, the LGB alliance right now is fighting with the T's. Probably because your ideology isn't based on either fact or principle, but is based on whatever seems the most right thing to do right now. Fuck what's going to happen in five minutes. Remember, Gabe isn't looking for white nationalism or misogyny. What he wants is the cure to his soul sickness. And these friendly microcelebs are here to offer a shot of life advice with politics as the chaser. It is extremely important that politics be presented as a set of affects, not a set of beliefs. The second pathway is infiltration, which is its own beast. Media personalities sometimes become gateways to the right almost by accident. They do something edgy, a part of their audience reacts positively, and facing no real consequence, they do it more. This leads to further positive reinforcement from conservative fans, the rest of the audience acclimates, and the cycle repeats, the personality pushing the envelope further and further based on what flies with their increasingly conservative audience. Again, I don't understand why you constantly conflate conservative with white nationalist. I mean, unless you're just doing it on purpose, because you're a shithead lefty. That's entirely possible. But having an alt-right fan base who is white nationalist is not having a conservative fan base. Because the alt-right suffers almost all the same problems you do in that, other than a white ethno state, they don't know what they want five minutes down the road either. All they care about is getting their white ethno state. And even then, sometimes they can't agree on that. So does it really have to be this difficult for you to just acknowledge that conservatives and the alt-right are different things? Can you acknowledge that well, conservatives will all say the alt-right has the right to exist. We won't approve of them. 
We don't just go, hey, Richard Spencer, how you doing, man? No, we go, yeah, he's a fucking idiot, but he has the right to talk. And also to pretend that PewDiePie is now somehow the symbol of the alt-right. Some random Swedish guy who I think lives in the UK now. He makes edgy jokes. That is not the same thing as being in the alt-right. Now, I know you openly admit that you can't tell the difference between someone who has a racist sense of humor and who is a racist. But I can tell the difference. Most anyone can tell the difference. PewDiePie is not trying to eradicate the Jews, but he might make a couple Holocaust jokes. And sure, alt writers like his stuff. He makes the same jokes they do. The difference is PewDiePie intends them as humor, and the alt right believes them. The thing is, the vast majority of PewDiePie's audience understands this, and only the people who were already radicalized before by actual members of the alt right don't understand the humor in it, and they only see it as truth. As in, PewDiePie isn't radicalizing anybody, but sometimes the radicals go and watch PewDiePie. In this way, they become a right-wing figure by both radicalizing and being radicalized by their audience. Infiltration is deliberate. The far right will reliably target any community that has, one, a large white male population, two, whose niche interests allow them to feel vaguely marginalized, and three, who are not used to progressive critique of said interest. This isn't to say progressive critique doesn't exist or hasn't been baked into the property from the beginning, but that it has been so far easy for white guys to ignore. As such, progressives within that community probably don't talk politics much. That's probably because no one likes talking politics with you. I mean, you are, you are the people who go, everything you love is bad, and you are a bad person for loving it. You're why nobody likes talking to the progressives. If you could avoid labeling everyone who likes something you don't like, and everyone who isn't just like you a Nazi for like five minutes, maybe we could actually have a conversation. And women and minorities are perfectly welcome to post, same as anyone, but just, you know, don't, don't make identity politics, you know, like, a thing. Which is a perfectly valid point, because nobody enjoys identity politics. It benefits nobody except the person playing the game. So maybe instead of starting all of your arguments with, as a black trans woman... You could just start your argument with an argument. I think you'd actually gain a significant amount of respect if you started off that way. Given Gabe's proclivities, he's probably already in a number of fan communities where he can geek out and not get teased. And this is where the far right will go looking for him. Communities are at their most vulnerable to infiltration at times of political discord. This can happen naturally. Say, a new property in the fandom has a black protagonist. Literally nobody cares that they made Finn black. In fact, of all my extensive conversations with people who love Star Wars to greater or lesser degrees, pretty much everyone agrees that Finn is the only decent character in this entire new trilogy. Or are you talking about those evil Chinese alt-writers, where Disney felt the need to make Finn pretty much non-existent on the movie poster, just so that people would go see the movie? Or it can be provoked. Say, a bunch of channers join the forum and say provocative things about race to get people arguing. Or both. Left to its own devices, the community might sort out its differences and maybe even come out more progressive than they started. But with the right pressure applied in the right moment, these communities can devolve into arguments about the need to remove a nebulously defined politics from the conversation. The adage about bros on the internet is political means anything I disagree with. I've literally never heard that. And googling literally the exact words that you just had on screen still pulls up nothing. So I'm just going to assume that it's an adage that you made up. But it would be more accurate to say here, political means anything on which the community disagrees. For instance, Nazis are bad is an apolitical statement because everyone in the community agrees. Wait, what happened to all those alt-right influencers in the community? Surely they must disagree. It's common sense and therefore neutral. But paradoxically, Nazis are good is also apolitical. How is Nazis are good apolitical? I mean, I guess technically the words are, but if you were to just straight up say, the Nazis are good, with no other context like, this is clearly a joke, that's a political statement. To be fair, so is Nazis are bad, but at least it's a non-controversial political statement. Because Nazis are bad is the consensus, Nazis are good must just be an edgy joke, and even if not, the community already believes the opposite, so the statement is harmless. 
my only assumption here is that lefty communities are very weak because one, you can't tell whether someone is serious or joking when they say the Nazis are good, and two, you you don't push back on that if you think someone's being serious about the Nazis being good. Like, I run an objectively right-wing Discord, and the rare handful of times we actually get a Nazi in there, we push back. We don't immediately ban him, because that would be retarded. We actually like free speech and debate. But we douse him in mockery eternally. Like, if you guys are supposedly the enemy of the Nazis, why is it us right-wingers who have to deal with them all the time? You, you can't mock Nazis? Like... We're, we're going to go punch all the Nazis who are just saying bad things on the streets. But you, you, you can't mock them on the internet? Is it, is it that difficult for you? Tolerable. However, feminism is good is a political statement because the community hasn't reached a consensus. It is debatable and therefore political. Yeah, but by your own definition, if there is someone in there who thinks the Nazis are good, that makes it debatable. Because everyone else disagrees. There is now a disagreement, therefore there is a debate. But again, I feel like you take everyone who's ever made a Nazi joke as being a Nazi, when there are actually only a handful of neo-Nazis out there. And you should stop talking about it. And making political arguments, no matter how rational, is having an agenda. And having an agenda is ruining the community. But again, convincing everyone in the community that Adolf Hitler was a good guy is an agenda. And it's a pretty obvious one at that. Is leftism just like a form of collective autism? Now, it is curious how the things that provoke the most disagreement tend to be whichever ones make white dudes uncomfortable. One of life's great unanswerable mysteries. You can gather where this is going. A community that doesn't tolerate progressivism, but does tolerate Nazism, is going to start collecting Nazis. Nazis whose goal is to drive a wedge between the community and the left. Once the left acknowledges, hey, your community's developing a Nazi problem, the Nazis, who are, remember, trusted apolitical members of the community who might just be kidding about all the Nazi shit, say, did you hear that, guys? Those cultural Marxists just called all of us Nazis. Yep, yeah, it's official. You're, you're talking about people who make Nazi jokes and conflating them with actual Nazis. Uh, you've never actually met a Nazi, because they're, they're pretty obvious. Wedge. Similarly, any community members who say, but Nazis, though, are framed as infiltrators pushing an agenda, even if they've been there longer than the Nazis have. They get the wedge, too. This is how fandoms radicalize. They are built as, yeah, I'll say it, safe spaces for nerds, weebs, and furries, and are told that the left is a threat to their safety. And given a choice between leaving a community that has mattered to him for years and simply adjusting to the community's shifting politics, the assumption is that Gabe will stay. This assumption is right often enough that a lot of fandoms have been colonized. Okay, look, I'm going to call this the end of part two. But I do have one final question. Which fandoms were colonized? Like, I I'm not aware of the supernatural fandom out there being full of Nazis, or the Doctor Who Nazis, or any of that shit. Like, you always talk about these fandoms, and they've been colonized, and all these other places the Nazis are. And you never provide citations for any of them. I mean, you talk about how 4chan is run by the Nazis, and okay, fair enough. But that's common sense. What other fandoms are there? And more importantly, which ones have been taken over by the Nazis? You say there are a lot of them.